Come with us on a journey through time and meet the first creatures who lived here on Earth at the new Paleontology Hall at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. David Temple tells us more about the new paleontology exhibit. Well, this feature, it's laid out very similarly to a lot of uh, to, to many halls. In other words, it's telling a story. A story has a beginning, a story has an end. Um, and it's, it's sort of, in a way, it follows a similar trajectory of our old installation, but of course, it's Texas-sized. It's on steroids. It's much more, uh, there's a lot more specimens involved and a lot more vignettes involved. And of course, the museum chose to bring in as an, the other curator, the guy I work with is Robert Bacher. Robert Bacher is a wonderful paleontologist, master uh, uh, teacher, master storyteller, and his vision of this was sort of what the American Museum of Natural History had done at its outset. One of the greatest museums in the world. One of their great directors, Henry Fairfield Osborne, had arranged the history of life in sort of a tableau style, where all the animals that interacted in an environment were grouped together. So you sort of recreated the ecology of a given point in, in space and time. And that's exactly what we did here. So we start out with the Paleozoic. We devoted a lot of attention to the Paleozoic because Houston had some really nice specimens and we had the advantage of being able to uh, loan probably the world's best collection of trilobites. They're exquisite. So we wanted to, to, to rely heavily on that for the Paleozoic and we did. And then of course, after the Paleozoic, the terminal Paleozoic in the Permian is the area where we're conducting some of our own research. So many of the specimens that you see there are things that museum field crews have collected. And then of course from there it goes on to the age of the dinosaurs, age of the mammals, and it comes full circle all the way around to uh, the period of time that's just before us. So and it's the fossils that we have here in Houston. It's the mammoths, the mastodons, the things that are actually on the ground beneath us here in Houston. Of course, there's a very tight dinosaur bird connection, and we, we have that repeated uh, several times or many different ways throughout the hall. One of the ways, of course, that we did this is we commissioned uh, quite a few murals. So we have the, the, the specimen, the skeletal specimen. We want to show them represented as they were, fleshed out and alive. So we've done that uh, in most of the tableaus using uh, murals. So the murals reflect some of the latest science and the bird dinosaur connections. And one of the specimens that's our, our signature piece for this new construction, and we're very excited. I mean, Houston can claim to be number one in a lot of different areas. Some of them are really good. Some of them, I, I don't know if we lost the bad air quality one or not. Some of them aren't so good. But one new thing that Houston, the feather in Houston's cap, is we can say that we have the world's most complete triceratops. And some of the, from the finding this, not only is it the complete, most complete in forms of a skeleton, it has skin. It's actually mummified. And we know it's the first time that's really been found in, in this degree. And we know from looking at that skin that the Triceratops, actually the skin wasn't smooth. It was, Dr. Bacher likes to say, it's not naked, it's not naked. We always thought it was naked, it's not naked. It has some sort of quills on. And so that will probably uh, change the way this particular dinosaur is represented. Uh, one of the things, of course, it's not online right now, but we are developing an app which will have sort of custom tours and custom information done. So this will be something that we're developing that will replace sort of the, if you've been to museums, you remember the old acoustic guide thing where you would plug in your tour. This is so much more. And it'll be online more than likely mid-summer, late summer. Um, and it'll have a lot of opportunities where if your child's interested in one specific dinosaur, you can plug in for a tour for that. If they're interested in, um, you know, predator-prey relationships or things like that, you'll be able to do that. But I would come early, I would plan to stay a while. I have seen kids in this exhibit for three hours. Three hours. And the reason why I know that, I'll be working on a case or installing a case, I see them go by. I'm there, I work for another hour, I see them go by again. I'm working for a while, I turn around, I look, they're right there watching me, talk to them for a minute. So people are really engaged by this. And visually, it's a very um, stunning installation. It's one of the, the thoughts on the design is fossils is fine art. And so because of that, uh, it's very beautiful, but uh, and the, the mounts are lit exquisitely. And the other thing is, there's many things that aren't behind glass. So the, art, the thought being that when you go to an art museum, you know, you want to see the Van Gogh, the Van Gogh's right there, you can look at the Van Gogh. In this particular case, you want to see some of these incredible world treasure, very beautiful fossils. They're not behind glass, so they're, they're very visible. Of course, we don't want people to touch them, but we want to let people look at them very closely, and um, you can do that. For more information about how you and your family can join in on the Summer Museum Fun, visit the Houston Museum's website at www.hms.org. For the Stafford Magazine, I'm Marie Munoz.